Yo, 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 yo. What up, everybody? It's Uncle Brett here. Uh, no guest this week, just me ranting and raving on a uh, straight shoot, straight shooting episode number five uh, titled We Are Not Loud Enough. Listen, I just recorded an intro for this and then feel like I said too much. So I erased it and started over. There's not a lot of hunting talk in this, man. It's all kind of personal shit and the way of the world and what do we do and where do we go and how did we get here and where are we going and how we fix this shit. And it's, uh, you know, if you don't like it, just fucking fast forward. But uh, I really think it's important that uh, the common sense folk in the uh, world today get together and figure out a way um, that our children will be able to live a long and prosperous life here in America instead of allowing it to be run into the fucking ground by these liberal cunts. Uh, that you see on the news every single day. I've had enough, and I just don't want to see it anymore. And it's time we do something. I just don't know what that something is. And I would love to hear from you if you have any great ideas, because I am fucking on board, man. I am tired of this shit. And uh, we as American, strong-willed American men, uh, put a stop to this. So anyway, that's uh, the next 30 minutes. Enjoy! This episode is brought to you by Beefcakes. Beefcakes is not your traditional gym. If you want to lay down between bench presses, go ahead. You want to pee outside? That's fine. Just be mindful of my neighbors. Do you want to not clean up your dumbbells when you're done with them? Go right ahead. Just be prepared for some ridicule. Do you want a chocolate fountain? Do you want a nacho bar? Perhaps you'd like to sit down on one of our fine leather couches and play NHL 22 on the Xbox. Cool. That's great. If you're tired of a traditional big box gym and you still want to get that pump but maybe have a snack, Beefcakes is the gym for you. Come see us today at Beefcakes. Face. Oh. Man, as a hockey guy, like I grew up playing hockey my whole entire life, the, the idea, the symbolism behind a face-off, the, the mano e mano, the, the culmination of all your hard work and the intensity uh, when it matters most, you know, truly symbolizes the pursuit of wild game, whether it's deer or turkey or elk or whatever. You know, you have practiced uh, your whole season or your whole off season for that single defining moment, whether it's on the ice or whether it, whether it's against you know your formidable opponent, that that mature white-tailed deer or that wily can't seem to figure out turkey. <laughs> I struggle with turkeys, if you can't tell by my uh, nervous giggling. You know, face-off e-bikes, formerly known as stealth hunting e-bikes. Same great bikes, just a brand new name. A little rebranding had to occur to sort of identify themsel- ourselves, themselves, um, you know, clearly and uh, uh, on the internet. But uh, it's the same, it's the same great brand. It's the same innovation. It's the same everything that you had at Stealth Hunting E-Bikes, just with a new name. Uh, these built these bikes are built and shipped from Michigan, uh, so that is near and dear to my heart. You know, uh, by actually tearing apart and assembling these bikes, you know he's got these this access to you know replacing parts and and, and creating the perfect. Uh, mobile to climb these hills and you know I am not a slender fellow Um, I do like my sugars and I like my uh, fried foods but I'm moderately healthy I'm uh, I'm six foot and I'm over 200 pounds and I have been putting my bow hunter to the test here in Michigan um, because I knew that this 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 bike could help me in those scenarios where I needed to climb a hill um, whether it be a chisel plowed cornfield or just some terrain here on my private properties in Michigan, I knew that it could get me from point A to point B and I have been testing it and it absolutely gets me where I need to be quickly and quietly. It was incredibly easy to get this bike to my house and do the final assembly in my garage. You know, the, the entire lineup honestly is, is geared to climb these hills. 
um, custom configured drivetrains and custom fabricated parts. These bikes are suited for the steepest terrain. Now I haven't gone, I haven't done anything crazy like test them out at attack or any ski hills, but I've seen Dieter do it. Um, smallest front chain rings in the interest industry, offering the same motors and batteries as the biggest names in the industry, but at a fraction of the cost. Um, so listen, if you want to make every hunt count, make sure you're using face off hunting e-bikes. What is going on everybody? Hi, set up in the, uh, set up in the new studio today. And by new, I mean my barn. And so in the summertime, so let me back up a little bit in, in my home, I have a basement, which in a traditional old Michigan farmhouse, the basement was the root cellar it is very small. It is probably less than a hundred square feet. Maybe it's a hundred square feet at the most. Maybe it's maybe it's slightly over a hundred square feet. It's very dark and it's very dingy. And by no, it's not dingy. That's rude. It's nice. It's carpeted. It's painted. My wife had it painted for me to, to use as my office. There's a nice uh, cabinet down there. There's a television. There's the Xbox. There's a nice wooden table down there. Uh, and in the winter time, that's my office. The problem I have with that room is that I can't see outside. I can't see daylight. Um, and so it wears on you after a while. So I realized last year that I had a room in the barn that was once a wood shop and is no longer used as a wood shop and I could just clean it out and it uh, it could function as like my hunting room. And so I keep all of my archery equipment out here. All of my hunting stuff is here uh, in this room shop um with the exception of any firearms that is in the house in the safe um and i had this giant table that i could resurface and move all of my off or like my job work uh all of my office supplies out here in the summertime so i can see outside um i can get up and walk around there's a lot more room this is probably bigger than my basement office now that i look at it it's for sure bigger um problems. There is no heat or air conditioning. So in the summertime, it gets real hot. I have a portable air conditioning unit that I will use. In the wintertime, it's real cold. So I don't do anything out here in the wintertime. Uh, there are barn animal noises, which you will most likely hear in the recording. There is a pig out back. There are chickens. There are ducks. The sheep are way in the backyard. You can't hear the sheep. Um, you may hear uh, sometimes you may hear kids yelling. Um, it is not acoustically. It is not the most welcoming recording studio. It is all wood and natural, so it's not terrible. Um, but we're going to do this. We are going to do an episode here in the barn and we're going to do all of our episodes here in the barn for the duration of the summer. I had a really <clears throat> bizarre week. This is going to be a this is a, this is a solo Brett episode. So this is what we will call the Straight Shooter series, episode five of the Straight Shooter series. Um, and I've had this one written down for a long time. It's titled "We Are Not Loud Enough," and we're going to get into that. But for now, I just want to say I didn't have guess, a guest lined up. This I got lazy. I reached out to one person who was busy, and so it just didn't work. And I didn't put a lot of effort in. To getting another person to join me in the podcast for a couple different reasons. Number one, on Saturday, I learned that somebody that I work with took their own life on Friday, the day before. Um, and that has rattled me to my core. Uh, I think about him every day. And it's not like we were that close. I mean, he was somebody that I work with closely for an entire project and from afar on some other projects. And he was somebody that I would text with and call and email and communicate because he was my direct line to the construction pro project that I am responsible for. He built an entire restaurant for me and um, went through the punch list proce process. He had turned over keys to operations. And then that night he took his own life and totally messed me up, man. Like I... I am have, I have a real hard time with that. Like I talked to that guy Friday morning and Friday night he had had enough and it blows my mind that I couldn't pick up on any cue or signs and everybody says that. So that was number one. Number two, I had been having some problems at home with the well, our well water, and they came out to look at it Monday morning and said, after doing a bunch of tests, said, you need a whole new well which was a, a bit of a surprise. I mean, I knew it was an, an option, but it uh, didn't know that that was for sure going to be the way we had to go. So 
long story long, they now it is today Thursday. Uh, they just drilled a new well in my yard today. So it's been, you know, the house hasn't had adequate water for the whole week. Um, my brain just hasn't been in it. So forgive me for not having a guest to banter with today. There's a lot of people that I could talk about this topic with um, that have a similar mindset as I do, who are of comparable age as myself. And uh, I am 43. I was born in 1981, for those of you who do not wish to do the math. Um, I am married, a father of three children. The ages are 13, 10, and 5. And that all has something to do with the topic, we are not loud enough. Those of you who have any common sense or have any connection to uh, social media or the news or modern communication devices understand what's going on in the world today. Um, But back up a couple of years ago, and the world was unfolding with something that most of us have never experienced before in our lifetime. The emergence of what was described as a global pandemic of epic proportion, meaning that there was a virus or an illness going around that none of us knew how to handle, how to uh, deal with, and nobody really knew what was coming next. And so um, for most of us, myself included, we trusted that the information that we were being distributed was accurate and honest and uh, with the best of it. It soon became clear to a lot of us that a lot of knee-jerk reactions were being made uh, and decisions were being made. A lot of um, uh, a lot of people in power were choosing to enforce regulations that did not necessarily go with what some of us believed were uh, the best approach. Uh, we were forced to stay inside. We were forced to wear a mask against our will. Many of us were forced to vaccinate or uh, forego employment. Of those things, a great majority of my closest friends and family um, were able to see through, maybe you want to call it the lies or the misinformation or the um, the bullshit. And we said no. And we would not stay in our houses. We would not wear a mask. Uh, we would not be forced to vaccinate. And we chose instead to live a healthy lifestyle. We chose to get oxygen. We chose to get fresh air. We chose to get uh, vitamin D via the sun. We chose to stay active and uh, be mindful of what we were putting into our bodies and how we treated our bodies. And we chose to just simply remain uh, healthy. That caused a lot of pushback from employers, um, from healthcare providers, this whole time that this was going on, I was dealing with a retina detached, and I was forced to get surgeries, and I was forced to be in these uncomfortable situations with healthcare providers who um, should have your best uh, interest in mind, and instead were forcing you to do things against your will for the betterment of, quote unquote, the betterment of society, uh, meaning you will wear a mask, um, you can't come here unless you've been vaccinated. You can't come here and do this, that, and the other thing, take tests. My employment included. I worked for a humongous nation, a worldwide restaurant chain who forced vaccinations on employees unless you chose to disclose religious exemption. Um, I said no. Uh, in fact, I said nothing for a really long time. And then I said, no, I'm not going to do this. Um, I will fill out your religious exemption. Even though I'm not religious, I filled out a religious exemption and I submitted it and it was, was of course, approved. But nonetheless, I was put in a really precarious situation that I didn't feel like I should have to be put in by an employer. My employer has absolutely no right to tell me what I can and cannot do with my body. It's my body, my body, nachos. And a lot of people were put in that situation. And I can't imagine uh, being in that situation with an employer who didn't offer exemption opportunity. Um, And today we find ourselves in a world where the loudest people are the most misguided. And it's everywhere. It's on all of our social media accounts. It's on the news constantly. It's on every web page that you, if you pull up a generic web browser like Google or Microsoft and and your homepage is just a, a hodgepodge of all of the news. Everything is screaming the loudest people in the world right now 
are the most misguided. It's the people who feel like men can be women and women can be men. And men can have babies and gender is fluid and your sex is ambiguous and boys can be in with girls and girls can be in with boys and adult drag queens should read your books to your young people and you should be able to cut off your genitals and you should support, you know, abortion and all your tax dollars should pay for it. And it's, it's this, that, and it's just screaming from the mountaintops from all the misguided youth. And meanwhile, those of us with common sense are left scratching our heads and not, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I, I look around and I think, what kind of world are my children going to grow up in? As for me, I'm over the hill, man. I'm 40 years old. You know, realistically, what am I going to change that's going to affect me personally? By the time I or my generation, quote unquote, fixes anything, I'm going to be an old man and senile and my golden years are going to be all I have left. And so what does it really matter? But that's not the point. The point is, what world will my 13, 10 and five year old grow up in if I do nothing and I don't know what the answer is? Um, I feel like I spend my whole day you know, trying to be healthy and trying to um, remain mobile and, and work out and, and work and, and cook dinner for my family and or breakfast, lunch, or dinner for my family and be present and go on dates and spend time with each child independently. And before you know it, each day is gone. And as much as I want to do something, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to be louder. I don't know how to how to stand up and make a change, but I feel like our generation, my generation of 40-year-olds, and we'll, we'll call it mid-30s to uh, late 60s, this generation who still has the capacity to do good in the world, we are too quiet. And I, I think there's a lot of people who are of the opinion, what am I going to do? What can I do? And like I just said a couple seconds ago, I don't know what to do, man. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to yell at. I don't know who to beat up. I don't know who, I don't know where my voice is most beneficial. And this doesn't really pertain to hunting and outdoors, but this is my platform and this is what I'm going to use it for today. And so I just feel like there's so many things that are happening in the world and we, the common sense generation, isn't loud enough. And I just read something today um, and, I'm, and I took a screenshot of it. I'm going to read it right now. <clears throat> this is from a guy on Twitter, because I refuse to call it X. His name is Nick Fritas, and he says, quote, I think our country will eventually be saved, not because we finally elected the quote unquote right person, but by people realizing that we should not have a government so powerful that every election cycle is the most important election of our lifetime. And that's it. So many people a long time, several years ago said, it's all right. The government will figure this out. Our government will take care of us. Our government would never lie to us. And I think what we've come to realize, based on how many lawsuits and admissions of guilt all of these vaccine providers are coming forth with today, that their product is causing health problems and that we were lied to and that masks don't do anything and social distancing doesn't do anything anything, and that walking in one direction through a grocery store never did anything. I think we're realizing that we've been lied to for so long that some of us are frozen, myself included. Paralysis by analysis. You think about all of the shit that you could be doing or should be doing or maybe could have done better, and you're frozen because you can't spend your whole entire day dedicated. I mean, I can't spend my whole entire day dedicated to trying to solve the problems of the world. I have a job to do. And I have a job to do because I have to pay to feed my family and support my family and my pastimes and my passions. And meanwhile, the government literally spends all waking hours of the day trying to fuck us, general population. They have these obnoxious mandates for electric cars. Who the fuck wants an electric car? They don't work where it's cold. The the, the carbon footprint for producing these lithium ion batteries, these, these lithium batteries to, to produce these, to power these vehicles is creating far more, it's far worse than any coal plant or nuclear power plant. Um, the, there's gas moratoriums in my industry. I have, there are markets where I work, well, not I work, but where my co-workers are employed. There are gas moratoriums. You cannot bring more gas, a new gas service to uh, a, a construction site 
because there's no more natural gas. They want to eliminate your gas-powered appliances so that you're stuck using electric so that when they decide that you've been a naughty boy or girl, they'll cut your electricity off and you will be stuck with nothing to do. You can't cook, you can't clean, because all of your appliances are electric and you agreed to. And and silence is... Com- is uh, your silence is being complicit. If you do nothing, then whatever happens to you is your fault. And that's the that's the gist of this podcast. We're so quiet, I think, because it's very comfy right now. We're not agitated. We're not, you know, everything's a little bit more expensive, but it's not so bad. And they're just there's that old adage of the frog in the pot of water. So if you drop a frog in a pot of boiling water, it's going to freak out and it's going to jump out. But if you put that frog in a pot of water and you slowly crank up the heat, it's going to stay in there until it's cooked to death. And that's what's happening. They're slowly squeezing you until it's too late. When is that point? What is that turning point for us as a society? You know, they 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 want your vehicles to have all these chips and these electric vehicles so that when they feel like it, they'll turn them off. I, and I don't think people realize that. They, they're they so caught up in, I'm saving the fucking planet by getting this electric vehicle that they lose sight of the fact that our government doesn't care about us. Your government has never cared about you since the beginning of this country. That was about the only time that this ever happened. Hell, there was a revolution over a 2 or 3% tax on fucking tea. They burnt the fucking place down. They started a fucking revolution over a goddamn tea tax, and now here we are being absolutely fucking taxed into our to death, and we do nothing about it. If you look at if if you just print out a pay print out your your last or your next pay stub, and then look at how much taxes you pay to the federal government, and then think about the sales taxes that you pay on everything uh, that you buy and or sell capital gains tax, your estate taxes, your gas taxes, taxes on a car that you already purchased and drive, and then you have to get taxed again when you get your new fucking tags every year. You're literally slaves to the government, and they don't care about you. So why would they implement? Your government is taxing the fuck out of you because they don't care about you. So why do you think they would implement anything to help you? They won't, and they will not. So again, I ask, what do we do? Because I don't know what the answer is. I'm talking out loud because I don't know who else to talk to, and maybe... Just maybe if enough of us that think alike and have some fucking common sense and common decency would band together and stand up and take and remove these fucking clowns from power, something may, something good may come of it. But deeper than all of that, we must realize that we are our own saviors. There is nobody There is no elected official that's ever going to care more about you than you. There's no elected official that's ever going to care more about your family or your community than you do yourself. And you must look inward. We must look inside of ourselves to come up with a solution because where we are going, the direction that we are headed, I am absolutely mortified at the future for my children. And there are so many people that I know that are married without children and have no intentions of having children. And those people don't care. And I don't fucking care that they don't care. It makes sense. You will never know what it feels like to have children and then dread the world that your children will grow up in. The reason that they don't care is because they will be dead and nobody that they love will be left behind to deal with the repercussions of your inactivity and your unwillingness to do anything. So fuck those people's opinion. If you don't have children and you never want to have children, it's highly unlikely that you and I will have a similar sense of what is right and wrong for the future of this country. Not that I think everybody must have children, but it is very difficult for you to care at the same level because one day you will be gone and nothing else will remain. I mean, you know, bullying. I had that written down. So bullying. Let's talk about that. Do you remember when you could talk shit to somebody and it was okay? I mean, it was never really okay, but you could bully somebody and you could get your point across and it was it was your it was a it was a way of showing that I'm not going to put up with your shit. I'm going to bully you to into doing what's right. I think we need to bring bullying back because again, the loudest people are the softest people because they know that bullying is gone. There's not enough people punching people in the fucking face. I love to see uh, the protests that are going on right now, the anti-Israel post uh, protests, and how many people are standing up for America. There's not that many, but there are some, and they are fighting back, and they have had enough. And I, I love the bullying aspect of it. I love, I love when there's a giant black woman 
who's running her mouth at a bunch of frat boys and they refer to her as nothing makes me happier because a why should we respect anything that you say when you don't care enough about yourself to take care of yourself and no being fat as fuck is not beautiful it's unhealthy it's disrespectful you are a drain on the economy you should be ashamed bring back bullying you know the invasion at the southern border you have millions upon millions upon millions of people coming across the border illegally. And then somebody like the Washington Post writes an article that there is these strange outbreaks in uh, in the diseases that we haven't seen for so many years. Well, no shit. You're letting in third world people, people from third world countries who do not have the same level of cleanliness or health. And you are letting them fl- funnel across the southern border and who knows where else? Maybe the northern border too. I don't really know. But they're bringing diseases in. And then you are housing them amongst other people who are then getting sick. And then bingo, bango, bongo, two plus two equals four. You have a whole bunch of fucking diseases that you haven't seen for a really long time. Because you don't do a lot of data research in third world countries and then compile it and then research it and then write about it. Not until it's on your fucking doorstep do you write about it. Fucking disgusting. And then, you know, the Boy Scouts. I just read a fucking article that the Boy Scouts are no longer going to be called the Boy Scouts. Not that the Boy Scouts is the fucking end-all, be-all, you know, pillar of uh, the community. Sure, there's been a whole bunch of stuff that's been wrong with the Boy Scouts of America. But but to eliminate the word Boy Scouts, the word boy from Boy Scouts, to just consider it Scouts. Okay, couple things, couple thoughts on that. If we're going to make it all one organization, fine. Let's just call it Scouts of America and let boys hang out with girls and co-mingle and all learn the same things. But let's not pretend for one second that this isn't going to get misconstrued as in this little girl says she's a boy, so we're going to let her into the Boy Scouts. Instead, you should be having a mental health conversation with that child's parents to reiterate to that young child that they are not in fact a boy, they are a girl. There are only two. It's boy and it's girl. And just because you feel one way doesn't mean that's the way you are. I just think, I think, I think we as American, we as Americans are too quiet. Uh, too many of us have forgotten what happened a couple of years ago. Um, like I said, because we've gotten so comfortable recently, uh, sliding down my chair there. We are not loud enough. And I'm open to discussing this with people. Um, not that my way of thinking is wrong, because if that's the way you believe, fuck you. I don't care about your opinion, but I'd like to discuss with people on where we go from here. What is the next step? Is it making sure that you're present at every school board meeting and every uh, um, city council meeting so that you listen to and understand the things that are being pushed through your local government? Because I think that's probably it. I think those of us with a strong opinion um, counterculture to what's going on today, you know, I don't want fucking pervert books read to my kids. I don't want a bunch of fucking gay talk all over, you know. This fucking shit where sexuality is thrust down everybody's throat constantly. Kids, um, listen, don't get me wrong. I'm a silly goose. And when it comes to Beefcake's gym, um, dick and fart jokes is the answer because it's all funny. But when you're pushing it to children, that's where you got to draw the line, man. And so I think, is in my opinion, it's the local small governments. It starts in your little community. It's men who can act like men, strong-willed, strong, opinionated, and willing to fight for what is right so that our wives and daughters are not suffering. Men who are men standing up for the rights of our community members at the local government level. And I think that means going and causing a scene at at your school board meetings, going and causing a scene if necessary at your city council meetings, and it is ensuring that nonsense is not passed and pushed upon us um, by the current loud people in our community. I don't know what the step after that is. I, it is my strong belief that our government, the current administration, is trying very hard to cause so much civil unrest that we are distracted at the shenanigans that they intend to have happen during this election cycle. I do not believe that Donald Trump is the answer to our problem. I do not believe that Joe Biden is actually a functional president of the United States. I do not believe that anybody in Washington speaks for what the majority of the American people believe or feel or want. 
And I think, in my opinion, we must begin to make changes at the local level. And I think it could, it can probably be as local and as small as con- confrontations with your neighbors. I believe you should to you should fight and you should work very strongly to create to create a sense of community with your neighbors, those who you can trust. I firmly believe that it is also equally important to stand up for what is right and disagree with firmly with any neighbors who disagree with the way your way of thinking. Many of you might recall that I had a situation where a woman um, approached me while I was weed whacking my yard. I live on three, just over three acres in pretty rural country. And a woman approached me while I was weed whacking who started the conversation by complimenting the barn and the house and said she loved it, loved everything we're doing, couldn't imagine how much work it was to have all of this stuff, and then proceeded to berate me or belittle me about my use of a weed whacker before noon on a Sunday. Now, I just said that I live in the country, and I don't know who this lady is. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I know who most of my neighbors are. But she told me that I should not be using my weed whacker or any loud motors prior to noon on a Sunday because it's the right thing to do. And I lost my shit. I told her she was crazy. I told her to get the fuck off my lawn. I told her that I was going to call the cops. I told her that she was trespassing. And I did all of this in front of my wife and youngest daughter. And then she told me I was setting a very poor example for my youngest daughter, to which I responded, on the contrary, my m- lady, what I'm showing my daughter is that we don't have to bend over and take it just because somebody says so. I'm showing my daughter that it is okay to stand up for what is right on your own property and that a stranger shouldn't be able to come and tell you what you can and cannot do on your own fucking property. And until we take a stand with those little battles, the people in restaurants, the people in the grocery store, the people in your in your neighborhood who think it's okay to push you around that their way of thinking is better than you. I don't think that you should do the opposite. Like I don't think you should be outwardly screaming at people and, and telling people that what they're doing is wrong. I think you should let those people live. But when they become aggressive and confrontational, you should shut it down within bo- the boundaries of the law to the best of your ability. Until we push back and teach them, the loud, the currently loud people, that their behavior will not be tolerated and that the only way for them to have a somewhat peaceful rest of their miserable lives is to live quietly by themselves and not bother anybody else because that's truly what we all want is we want to be left alone. We want to be able to raise our families with good values and comfortable in a comfortable way without being oppressed in any form or fashion until we start pushing those people back on those people. It's going to get worse. And so I think we need to fi- start fighting those mini battles at home and in the grocery store, at the restaurants. And then I think we need to take it to the city council. And I think we need to take it to the school board meetings. And then I think we need to elevate it a little bit higher to the state level. And I think once we can get the state in order, believe me, Michigan's a fucking shit show. We have one of the worst fucking clown governors I've ever seen in my fucking life. Until we can take it to the state level, I don't know what the answer is on a federal level. But we need to start standing our ground because this battle is far from over. And I'm sorry that I just talked for fucking 30 minutes about personal. But let me wrap it into hunting for like two minutes. The same goes for hunting, bitches. All of these local fucking outdoor, you know, rule makers in your local states are passing fucking laws because not enough of us are being loud. Not enough of us are raising hell. And it's one of my favorite cartoons is a little raisin on fire, raisin hell. Uh, We are not loud enough on a local level as it relates to our wildlife and our natural resource. And the federal, you know, the state governments are just ruling with an iron fist because not enough of us are raising a fucking stink. So all of that half an hour to say this. Look within yourself. Try to figure out if you're living true to what you believe in, because I don't think that I am, and I don't think that most people are. But I want to I want to get a group of us together. I want to hear, I want to hear from all of you who have ideas. What do we do? What do we do next? What do we do now? What do we do today, this week, tomorrow, next week, this month, next month? Where do we go from here? Because currently this shit ain't working. And it's not going to get any better. But I also I don't know what the answer is because I've never seen anything like this before in my life. We got to work together. Thanks for listening to my fucking rant.